COVID school closures, gas taxes, and the eviction moratorium. Those are just some of the liberal policies that wound up hurting the poor. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. And as we enter this season of kindness and charity, I think it's important to remind everyone that good intentions can be deadly. I don't mean to sound cynical, but if you're not careful, good intentions can wind up doing more harm than good. Kind of like giving your child a bazooka so she can defend herself from the monster under her bed. What's the worst that could happen? There's no greater example of good intentions gone wrong than some liberal policies that voters thought would help, but wound up hurting the poor. In fact, I have five examples of that, starting with number five. Everyone loves pigs. Not enough to stop eating them, of course, but before we eat them, we want them to be treated well. That's why Californians voted on a measure that would improve pigs' quality of life, requiring mother pigs to be given at least 24 square feet of space and requiring all pork products sold within California to abide by these standards. What's wrong with that? Well, these requirements are expensive, especially for smaller producers. And this will push pork prices higher. According to a Michigan State University agricultural economist, what's really happening is we're basically trying to restrict the lower cost choices. It's the poor people who are most likely going to be affected by these policies. Many low-income families rely on pork. It's a low-cost protein option. At least it was before inflation, but the point is, low-income families can't just switch to eating luxury meat items the rich can enjoy, such as filet mignon, foie gras, and chimera sliders. And the California price increase could have spillover effects on the entire country. If the poor can't afford pork, out of necessity, they may wind up having to eat the rich. And you can tell just by looking at them that this other, other white meat tastes really bland. Number four, everyone loves kids. Even the rude, thoughtless kids, like me growing up. So it made sense when many politicians wanted to protect children by closing schools when the coronavirus first began spreading across the US. However, schools remaining closed for so long often more than a year, wound up hurting school children, especially kids from the poorest neighborhoods, because not everyone could afford to do what California Governor Gavin Newsom did and send their kids back to in-person learning at a private school way before public schools were reopened. That's how you lead by example. And that example is, have you tried just not being poor? According to a report from Human Rights Watch, Poor students are less likely to have the necessary devices for online distance learning, more likely to find it difficult to access the internet for online distance learning due to its cost, and less likely to be able to afford existing or new costs related to education. It might sound crazy, but not everyone can afford the internet. Some kids still need to learn the old fashioned way, by finding certain types of magazines buried out in the woods. That's how we learned things when I was growing up. Additionally, low-income families were disproportionately affected by the economic fallout of the pandemic, and thus more likely to rely on the labor of their children to help support the family, either through the children beginning paid work or assuming more responsibilities within the home, such as childcare. So if as a kid you thought taking out the trash so it didn't stink up the house was an annoying chore, Imagine having to work 40 hours a week so your little brother doesn't starve to death and stink up the house. More after the break. Welcome back. Number three. We've seen examples of politicians trying to protect animals and children, and this policy aims to protect the environment. President Biden announced he wants half of all cars in the U.S. to be zero emission by 2030. And many blue states are following his lead. Gas-powered vehicles will be phased out or outright banned within the next 15 years in Washington, California, and even New York, which
which means New Yorkers will have to smuggle in gas-powered cars from New Jersey. Everything is legal in New Jersey. But if banning gas-powered cars spreads throughout the country, that means most people hoping to buy a new car in the future will have to buy an electric one. Because we all know flying cars still won't be available, science can put a man on the moon, but they can't even put a Corolla above a condo. Some research has shown that electric vehicles might wind up saving customers more money over the course of the car's lifetime than gas-powered vehicles. However, the upfront cost for purchasing an electric vehicle is often much higher. For example, a 2022 Toyota Camry costs about $25,000, while the most basic Model 3 Tesla costs nearly $39,000. And a DUI in a flying car costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hmm. Maybe it's for the best they haven't been invented yet. And yes, you may get rebates and incentives on an electric vehicle, but it can still be a lot more expensive. And many low-income people can't buy new cars anyway. They buy used cars, which are mostly older, gas-powered cars. And of course, these new laws mean the resale value of any gas-powered car you have now will also go down. Basically, forcing people to get electric cars and telling them they'll save money in the long term doesn't help those who don't have money for basic needs right now. The message that sends is, have you tried just not being poor? There is a chance electric vehicles will get cheaper over time as battery technology improves. But considering electric car batteries are often made from parts mined using child and slave labor, this could wind up hurting poor people not just in the U.S., but around the globe. But on the bright side, at least it will make Elon Musk even richer before he's also added to the bland billionaire buffet. Number two. The cheapest place you can get gas these days is the dollar menu at Taco Bell. But a big reason gasoline prices are so high is because of gas taxes. The federal gas tax is 18.4 cents per gallon on gasoline and 24.4 cents per gallon of diesel. That money goes to the Highway Trust Fund. The Highway Trust Fund finances most federal government spending for highways and mass transit. Highways and mass transit, huh? Glad to see our tax dollars are being spent so efficiently. And besides the federal gas tax, there are also state gas taxes. And when they're raised, that obviously hurts the poor and middle class the most. People with less money usually have to commute further, meaning they need more gas. In California, increasing its gas tax is part of why the state has the highest gas prices in the nation. Of course, the aim of California's gas tax is to help the environment. And California isn't exactly known for its pristine air quality. More after the break. Welcome back. And finally, number one. Surely the eviction moratoriums during the pandemic couldn't have hurt the poor, right? It was intended to keep them from losing their homes. Well, it helped them in the short term, but it'll hurt them in the long term. Kind of the inverse of buying an electric car. The eviction moratoriums hurt small landlords during the pandemic, who weren't able to raise or even collect rent in many instances. And you know a law is bad when it makes me feel sorry for landlords. Landlords that didn't lose their properties during the eviction moratoriums often jacked up rent prices once the moratoriums were lifted to try and get back lost money. These higher rent prices led to countless evictions. And a lot of landlords may raise the income requirements for new tenants to avoid being forced to keep non-paying tenants in the future. But hey, if you can't afford an apartment, you can always just sleep in your car. But it better be electric, not because of the upcoming rule. Because the only gas you'll be able to afford will come from the dollar menu at Taco Bell. As the old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's best to think about what you're doing long term and what consequences might come later. Especially when the people suffering those consequences always seem to be the most vulnerable in society. Or Joe Biden could just announce that repairs to the road to hell will be included in his infrastructure plan. Although the huge price tag for that might just hurt the poor even more. So what do you think about these well-intentioned liberal policies that wound up hurting the poor? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. 
Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.